Welcome to 21st Century Radio. I'm Dr. Zohara Hieronymus. Laura Kortner is our executive producer and Sika Wheeler, our assistant producer. Thirty years ago, Jonathan Goldman authored a groundbreaking book, Healing Sounds, The Power of Harmonics. Now, three decades later, this book, in a re-release from Healing Arts Press of Inner Traditions, Bear and Company 2022, still points the way to this century's greatest addition to our options for healing and well-being. Drawing from ancient traditions and modern science, Goldman has shown and taught others worldwide that sound, that vibration, that intentional use of harmonics changes the body, mind, and spirit. Using these tools for vibrational activation, Goldman shows how vowels can become mantras and sonic yoga can be used for meditation and relaxation. He draws, for instance, from Tibetan monks and their use of tantric harmonics, from Dr. Alfred Tomatis' use of Gregorian chanting, Pythagoras' exploration of sacred geometry. Goldman draws as well from other sources. Joining Jonathan to explore this work with 21st Century Radio and their co-author 2017 Healing Arts Press, The Humming Effect, is his wife and collaborator, Andy Goldman. Spend an hour with these chant masters and humming guides and learn about the many options available to us using our voice, our intentional focus, and the reality that sound does not need to be loud to create resonance or vibration, and that every person, regardless of age, can benefit through breath, sound, and encoding intent to improve our lives. Well, Jonathan, 30 years, and Andy, welcome. Such a pleasure to meet you. Oh, thank you so much, Zoe, for having us on today. We're delighted to be here. It is just a true blessing to be uh, resonating with you and everybody who's going to either hear this now or in the eons to come. May we bring uh, messages of... uh, using sound for healing. Amen. Absolutely. You know, 30 years is a long time, three decades. A lot of things have matured. You list for the virtual who's who of everybody and anyone from around the world in your work, Healing Sounds. How has this um, 30 years changed the work of sound therapeutics and the awareness of vibration as a healing tool? Well, uh, good question. I'd like to suggest that, indeed, it's so interesting because... uh, 30 years ago, when Healing Sounds first came out, it was one of a handful of books on uh, how sound can be used to heal and transform. And some of those books were 20 and 30 years old, still classics in the world today. But um, I'm really, really grateful that a lot of the material that I first, shall we say, um, wrote about in Healing Sounds has become universally accepted on the pla- on our planet, including basically the basic idea of how sound can be used for healing, and I can expound upon that in a minute, and Andy can too, and also uh, basically the importance of intentionality as a phenomena when it's encoded either on sound or anything else, and finally, the aspect of using vowel sounds to resonate uh, our uh, chakras. So, so those are three things that have really become so uh, encased that um, in Healing Sounds, one of the things I did was I offered a system of using the vowel sounds, which are sacred uh, really in many different traditions. And um, I received this in deep meditation one day. I remember the date. It was uh, the spring equinox, uh, May 21st, 1986. And I received this download. And I put it in the book, and now if you go on and you Google vows as mantras, it's basically the system that I introduced in Healing Sounds. Well, and what I'd like to say, when uh, the 30-year anniversary edition was, uh, when Jonathan was invited to do that, Jonathan said, well, you know, should I change this or that, or should I add this or that? And I said to him, Jonathan, your work in Healing Sounds was so ahead of its time that I think you should just leave everything as is, although I'll let him tell you what he did add, but this material in Healing Sounds is so invaluable today, and it's so wonderful that so many people are being exposed to what Jonathan did 30 years ago. 
Exactly. And you even see it in medical center. I know in mindfulness meditation, which you also mentioned, people are encouraged to intentionally vocalize a sound, even if it's ohm. I know I sometimes have paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, and they tell you, well, if you do that chant ohm, which I do, and it makes a tremendous difference. So being an early voice in sort of the modern era of very ancient techniques, it's not as though this is all new to the 21st century or 20th century. We have um, histories of different peoples using sound for elevating consciousness, for healing, for for even, as you point out, preventing crime in areas. Um, Talk to us a bit about the use of harmonics, what they are, and what overtones are, and why they're important. Yes, well, um, the book Healing Sounds is subtitled The Power of Harmonics, and very simply put, harmonics are the color of sound. And they are uh, responsible for the different tones and timbre of any instrument or any, uh, even our voices. So there are, if you like, they're the mystical aspect of sound. And uh, they are, as molecules are the building block of ma- matter, so harmonics are the building blocks of sound. And within every sound in nature, we hear a fundamental sound, but encoded in that sound, there is a multitudinous uh, number of other sounds that are simultaneously occurring, and these are the harmonics, and this is a concept that we are wanting people to understand because they're powerful healing agents. Well, that was one, that was perhaps really one of the major things in healing sounds that simply did not get picked up by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people now understand the power of frequency, but they don't realize that frequency uh, really doesn't exist by itself. Frequencies double, triple, uh, fourple, and they, they basically become these composite sounds that are based upon harmonics that are basically responsible for everything that we hear. And once you are able to, first of all, grok that, to grasp it as a concept, and then you begin to hear them, uh, it literally it shifts the way that you perceive sound and therefore shifts the way you perceive reality. And, and one of the ways to understand harmonics, if we can use the uh, uh, metaphor of a, a prism that, you hold up to the light, and all of a sudden you see all the colors of the rainbow. And you don't see them until you hold it up to the light. And that's analogous to harmonics as to the fundamental sound that you hear. So all of these sounds are happening at one time. Right. We Once again, we call harmonics the color of sound. And I have to say that most people... They, they use the term harmonics very frequently. Oh, that's really harmonically related, or let's have a harmonic X, Y, or Z, but they don't really have a clue that really they're talking about mathematical related universal principles that are the basis of everything from spectral analysis to the orbital distances of the planets. And in fact, we were just uh, checking out uh, last night some aspects of astrology that are harmonically related. So everything is harmonically related, but we're talking about actually geometric multiples that create whole number ratios that are sacred. And, and I know that's that's rather technical. A mouthful, yeah. <laughs> <Rather> technical. <laughs> but beautifully and, said. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, you know, it is really our hope that people can begin to embrace and understand harmonics because many healers, many people who are working with sound and healing really believe that it's the harmonics where the uh, the healing frequencies really are being emitted. And, you know, when you read the esoteric literature about the creation of worlds and being creators, that it is sound, you know, there was sound and there was light and light and then the word and, um, and that's just one tradition, but frequency is the core of matter and the dissolution of matter. And certainly, you know, Joshua running around (laughs) with his trumpets and bringing the walls down, that was vibrational 
dismantling. And so we do this, which is why, for instance, I, as an example, I can't be around loud, amplified music. It makes my heart sputter. Um, And I've never liked it. I prefer silence over anything other than perhaps humming or chanting or very quiet speaking. So we have a culture that has drowned out our sensibility of the subtle. And I say to people, just get in your car, turn it on, drive down the road, and hum the note or or sound or harmonic that you hear of your car. Because even when you ride on a train and it's bouncing off the windows, um, talk to us a bit about this being drowned out by loudness everywhere. Well, you have just hit upon a really important thing, which is the, on a level, the power of, not only the power of sound, but how uh, loud sounds trigger the fight or flight response in our nervous system, our, if you like, autonomic nervous system. And this has to do with the vagus nerve, but the bottom line is that this probably dates back to when we were cave people. And all of a sudden we'd hear the roar of a saber-toothed tiger, and we'd jump into a tree uh, before we even knew what was going on. And nowadays, we respond to loud sounds. Most people do the same way. Um, You and I and Andy are probably maybe much more uh, triggered by uh, uh, this phenomenon than a lot of people who have just become really used to it. Just yesterday, we had some uh, friends come over in our backyard, and there was somebody using a leaf blower around here because the gardening services came. And uh, literally, it was abominable and this fellow may or may not have been uh, using a uh, set of earmuffs to uh, uh or you know uh earplugs to help his you know uh, the sound but the other people didn't and it would have been a, the same thing I, the people i was with i said you know we we're so unused to the uh importance and the power of the volume of sound the amplification i said if this was light It'd be like I took a bright flashlight and was shining it in your eyes. It's that powerful. So when you were just talking about this, I think it's extremely important that we also begin to understand this, not only the phenomena of potential loss of hearing, which can certainly be enhanced and amplified by by loud sounds, but also the fact that regardless whether you're listening to uh, classical music or loud rock and roll, it's still going to affect your nervous system the same way. Yeah, as, as, a, as a person who experiences that, I can say 100% you're accurate. And when I was given hearing aids, because after decades and decades of a headset on for broadcasting, I impacted my left ear in particular, and I can't wear hearing aids. They're just too loud, and the background sound of everything literally affects my nervous system and creates anxiety. And I said to people, I'm sorry, you'll just have to ask me again when I need to repeat something or you need to repeat something. But but it, it bothers me so much because our children um, are are being raised with sound drilling in their heads day in, day out with their earbuds or whatever so loudly. And they want to know why they're all so anxious, upset, unsettled, and um, having challenges in their health and in their life direction. Our nervous system is so affected by sound. And so one of our basic tenets in working with sound, and we say this in all of our workshops, louder is not better. And that, to me, is such an important aspect of working with sound. And the other thing I want to say, and I think you mentioned it earlier, Zoe, that you like to be in silence. It is after we have the opportunity to make sound, to create sound with our voice, being in silence is essential. That's where the shifts and changes occur. So it's kind of getting that balance between sound not being loud (laughs) and then having the ability to be in silence. And that's uh, something that our culture uh, has not focused on so much and and almost as as if deliberate because then there's a form of um 
the loss of sovereign awareness. But we're going to be right back. We have to take a break. Our guests are Jonathan and Andy Goldman. Learn more and download sound healing samples at their website, www.healingsounds.com. Welcome back to 21st Century Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Zohara Hieronymus. Our guests are Jonathan and Andy Goldman, co-authors of The Humming Effect, Sound Healing for Health and Happiness, and the 30th anniversary edition of Healing Sounds, The Power of Harmonics, published by Healing Arts Press 2022. So before the break, we talked a little bit about um, the color of sound. And I, I like that you mentioned the work of Hans Jenny and cymatics because people can go online and actually see the effect of vibration on physical matter. Share with us a bit about this work. Uh, cymatics is... Uh... An amazing phenomena because literally it shows you how sound can affect form. And as my very dear mentor, Dr. Peter Guy Manners, who really was one of the people responsible for bringing sound healing into the um, 20th century, he was a uh, British osteopath who invented an instrument that used uh, sound for healing. He would say, when you look at the pictures that Dr. Hans Jenny, who was the man who initiated cymatics, uh, which is using sound uh, on inorganic material, uh, plastics, paste, liquids, and of course, water, which is pretty organic, but they create different shapes. And you can see how the uh, sound creates the form. And it's almost as though in the beginning was the word. So this type of phenomena is very, very uh, extraordinary. We can then begin to understand how sound can begin to affect us on a really deep level. You know, there are two ways that sound can basically heal us and affect us. And those two ways, one is called vibroacoustic. And that is when the sound goes directly into the body, affecting us at a cellular level. And uh, an example of vibroacoustics would be, for instance, if we are uh, humming, that humming is a very powerful, uh, affects our bodies very powerfully. Now, the other way that we are affected by sound is through psychoacoustics, and that is when we actually hear the sound going in through our ears, uh, traveling down our auditory pathways up into our brain, affecting our nervous system, our heart rate, our respiration. So when you think about those two ways that sound can affect us, you know, it gives you uh, some avenues to go down in terms of working with healing. It's beautifully articulated. I, I don't know how many people in the audience um, have the opportunity to understand how the clarity with which you bring to this issue is so important because there's a good deal of misinformation, made up things or just feeling impressions. But the fact that you've done this for so many decades and use science as well as experiential reality, um, I, I so respect and am so grateful for the way you articulate what can be very complicated in a very simple fashion. And having said that, I think it's important that we come back to the vowels, the A-E-I-O-U, which we learn as children when we learn to read. But it's much more than that. And I remember William Gray's talking tree from decades ago and the ancient Judaic and other traditions that you mentioned, Jonathan, earlier in our discussion, that the vowels can become such healing tools. So let's put some focus on that. The vowels. Our friends, the vowels. Well, what are very, very interesting is that um, the vowels have unto themselves different specific harmonics that when they are generated, when they are sounded, you can hear the vowels uh, and they will actually create this different vibroacoustic effect in your body. So as Andy, you want to do a demonstration of going from A to E just so we can do that? 
So if we even just tone the vowel sound, ah, uh, and then we go up to E, like ah, uh, in the heart chakra, and then E up on the crown chakra, and you're going to go head, putting your hand, hand on, your, uh, on your chest and on the top of your head and going, ah, uh, ye. You can actually hear and feel, actually feel, which is very important, a difference in what those two uh, vowel sounds actually, how they affect your body. You can and feel them vibrate in different vi places. Absolutely. And it's, it's in these vowel sounds that we can really begin to work with harmonics because the vowels uh, are innately filled with harmonics. Right. And you can learn then to basically generate different sounds in different parts of your body for vibroacoustic healing. And as you also point out, and as William Gray and others within the mystic hermetic tradition talk about, these vowels also have relationship to the elements. You know, A ah or A is earth and north, and E is air and east, etc., through I and O and U, th that they're related to various elements and directions, so that when you chant, there's also ways to intentionally bless your space using sound, so that even your space around you is then directionally endowed with your intentional awareness. So adding to the vowels, let's talk about intention. Oh, yes. Jonathan, take this away. He <laughs> created a formula 40 years ago, though. Frequency plus intent equals healing. Jonathan, I would love for you to share I'm your story. I'm doing a Tibetan deep voice. <clears throat> Okay, that was a t Tibetan deep voice and a great way to clear my throat, too. So, One of the few people who aren't Tibetan who can do it. That's Jonathan Goldman. <laughs> but um, the aspect of intentionality is so important because back 40 years ago, I was basically putting together a, um, a master's uh, a dissertation for Lesley University in using sound for healing. And I basically began just, you know, I had literally a pile of papers that was probably about a foot high of different systems that um, could be used to resonate the chakras or work to resonate the organs. And coming from a family of doctors, I thought, how wonderful. Uh, I'm going to be a first person to put this all together. But when I did, it didn't line up at all. In fact, it was really crazy. You would have Dr. X uh, doing uh, one set of frequencies for one organ, Dr. Y using a completely different set of frequencies for the same organ. They'd be different. Or Spiritual Master A would be using oh a series of mantras for uh, a particular chakra and spiritual, ma uh, spiritual Master Y or Spiritual Master C or whoever using a different series of mantras for the same chakra. And I was think, sitting there thinking, how can this be? How can this be? This doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And this inner voice said, it is not only the frequency of the sound that creates its effect. It is also the intentionality of the sound. And I wrote down the words, frequency plus intent equals healing. Frequency meaning the consciousness that is encoded upon the sound Frequency just simply being a metaphor for the sound, and healing is the desired outcome. And at the time that this first came out, I have to tell you, I'd be talking to all these different scientists and whatnot, and by gosh and by golly, they would think I was a man from a different planet, which I well may be, but regardless... <laughs> let, Hello, welcome to Earth. <laughs> right. Blessed, blessed be now, we've had lots of different people whether it's Bruce Lipton and the biology of belief or Joe Dispenza and the power of placebo or Masuro Emoto doing his water uh, yeah. crystal uh, pictures or Lynn McTaggart doing her uh, intention experiments that have been validating this. So people do no longer think we're so whacked. Well, and Wayne Dyer right. even did a whole PBS special on intention. And so intention is once again, one of those basic of working with sound as a human modality and the intention that we hold, that we encode onto 
whatever sounds we're making, that is a powerful, powerful medicine. No question about it. On Arab Yom Kippur, I had a dream that I was with Marcel Vogel, um, all of these people, Galen Hieronymus, Chris Bird, Terry Ross, all these very famous elders who are all on the other side. We were at a conference in the woods talking about minutia of frequency. And at the very end of the dream, one of them, I don't recall which one, said to me, you know, Zoe, the key to healing is intention. And the rest of this stuff is just to give us faith. Was that a real-time experience? Yeah, that was a dream just recently on yeah, the evening of Yom Kippur. Something that's pretty important that interrelates with this whole thing, which is talk about intentionality, but also I, uh, about a dozen years ago, maybe more, authored a book called The Divine Name that was done through Hay House. And that actually is a, uh, a rediscovery of what is called the Tetragrammaton, the ancient four-letter uh, name of God that was revealed to Moses on Mount Sinai. Yeah. And I basically discovered that this was actually a sequence of harmonically related vowel sound. And uh, in fact, on 11-11, which is our uh, anniversary, we did a uh, three-day workshop called the 11-11 Divine Name Seminar. And that, that's been recorded. And we have that uh, on our website, but it's fabulous. You'd really appreciate it because this sound is uh, so powerful. And I was making it for this very, very extraordinary rabbi at one point. And his one comment to me, because I had the resonance, he said, you must do it with more love. Ah, that is the whole thing. Ahava. And, and you know, it's so interesting because the yud ke vav ke, we don't say hey generally, but it's 10565. Five. I've had rabbis say that's the name of the Hebrew people. And it is a phenomenon that these hermetic traditions get glossed over as though they're no longer useful when, in fact, they're most often the keys to our evolution and our personal well-being. The, even the Native Americans, as you point out in your book, Healing Sounds, has five vibrations, and the Mongolians have overchanting, and the ancient Egyptians were aware of what you were just speaking of, that vocalization, along with visualization and intentionality, create manifestations. But there are other things about harmonics and healing, and one of them you talk about is harmonics and meditation. Yes. Uh, you know, I am uh, basically neglectful uh, of uh, saying that there's been many different, shall we say, developments in the field of medicine and harmonics from when I initially wrote Healing Sounds. And it kind of saddens me because I thought that we would be really looking more at the power of the voice and the power of different harmonically related sounds. Like, for example, Dr. Alfred Tomatis, who is a French otolaryngologist, uh, really showed that different types of sounds can charge, can go through the ear and charge the brain. And, uh, I mean, this is really extraordinary stuff, but we just don't seem to be that interested in our own ability to self-create sounds that have these wonderful uh, effects. We seem to be much more interested in taking pharmaceuticals. <laughs> well, right. and when you decide to open your consciousness into the uh, power of sound, uh, you don't have to use pharmaceuticals, you can, for instance, hum. And in fact, on the back cover of our book, The Humming Effect, uh, Bruce Lipton wrote a beautiful quote that I would love to share with our audience because it speaks to this very issue of uh, not using pharmaceuticals. Uh, he says that I highly recommend The Humming Effect for all those impacted by the stress of the modern world. It is a powerful non-pharmaceutical prescription for self-healing that has only positive side effects. And when we begin, so we thank Bruce for that gorgeous quote because something as simple as humming, and of course we call it conscious humming, but something as simple as breathing and consciously humming can actually uh, reduce 
the levels of stress that you're feeling. And once you begin to sort of open up to this, it's pretty amazing. And we're hoping that through our books and through interviews like this, that it will help to educate more people about how we have the power within our own bodies, our own bodies, minds, and spirits. Mm-hmm. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Zohara Hieronymus, and this is 21st Century Radio. Our guests are Jonathan and Andy Goldman, co-authors of The Humming Effect, Sound Healing for Health and Happiness, a Healing Arts Press 2017 release, and the 30th anniversary edition of Healing Sounds, The Power of Harmonics, published by Healing Arts Press 2022. So I'd like to switch over to humming, which I did a fair representation of going into the last break. Let's talk about humming because the humming effect and sound healing for health and happiness, bless the Lords, you know, humming is something everybody can do. Well, in fact, Zoe, that's exactly why we chose this topic to write our book on because we wanted to let people know that everybody can work with sound. And if you start with something as simple yet as effective as humming, it, you know, it causes people to not be judgmental about their own voice, their own sounds, and people from little babies all the way through to the elderly, everybody hums. And and as I was mentioning uh, earlier, we do call it conscious humming because we have a very specific way where we'll breathe, do diaphragmatic breathing, and then bring forth the hum. But uh, humming can, uh, Jonathan likes to call it the gateway sound. <laughs> right. Just as uh, well, when we were younger, they used to say that certain things were like, you know, gateways to other uh, uh, portals. And, you know, hum, and hum, everybody can hum. And for a lot of people, humming is their first real experience in terms of the uh, getting the power of their own you know, self-created sound. We're not judgmental about the hum. We don't see to have people say, oh, I can't hum or whatnot. But, you know, just getting back to some of the physiological benefits. When you hum, maybe the biggest, most important thing right now that has been scientifically validated and discovered, back when I wrote Healing Sounds, I basically talked about uh, certain harmonic uh, sounds that really seemed to, I, I called it sonic wristband. I presented this to these doctors and they didn't have a clue, but maybe one of them uh, thought about it because ultimately about uh, 15 years later, after I did this presentation in Germany, uh, it has been shown that humming produces 15 times the amount of nitric oxide that is being generated when you do uh, different breathing techniques. And this is actually enough nitric oxide so that it becomes an antiviral agent so that nowadays there are all sorts of different videos and articles being written on the power of humming to basically be used as an antiviral agent if you think you've been exposed or you're going to be around an area where there are a lot of bad, uh, nasty viruses. Well, the nitric oxide that humming produces uh, is, as Jonathan was just saying, it is 15 times more than when you're breathing that nitric oxide can be produced also. But when you add humming to it, it even amplifies the release of that antiviral molecule, nitric oxide. And, and that's just one of the physiological... Totally. Reasons. Melatonin, too. Melatonin gets released. So you can basically use humming as a technique to help get yourself back to sleep. Absolutely. If you Absolutely. wake up in the middle of the night. It's so cool. Yeah. And, and, of course, my fa- one of my favorite hormones that is released when you're humming is oxytocin, which is the trust hormone. And so when you're humming uh, either by yourself or with other people, you know, there is this connection with, you know, something greater that seems to occur. And that's the oxytocin that's being released. 
Well, I'm just going to hum my way through my day now. <laughs> so, so talk to us as you do in your book, The Humming Effect, about um, intentionally pushing the sound. Not pushing is not the right word. Focusing the hum into different body parts, like if you have a headache or your foot hurts or your toe or something. How actually intentional focus with the humming is what then becomes the, the energized healing tool. Well, you've got it. Once again, it is the perfect combination of frequency plus intent. Because I can literally uh, be, um, I could do this now, uh, and you you would hear me hit the same tone. But uh, with my uh, my consciousness, I'm going to be taking the sound and going from my forehead area to my chest area. Watch. Mm -hmm. I just did that. And you couldn't hear a change of tone, but I could feel a change of resonance or vibration in my body by simply with my eye, uh, like consciousness or intention, directing the sound to those different places. Now, mind you, I'm pretty adept at humming, but anybody can learn to do that, particularly if they shift the pitch a little bit. So instead of going, so they'll go like, mm, and you feel a different uh, resonance. Because here's a quote from the New York Times Science Section, February 8, 1988. Sound shaped into dazzling tool can make, break, or rearrange molecular structure. If you can rearrange molecular structure, what can't you do? Beautifully said, Jonathan. And it's interesting, uh, Zoe, just to give our listeners an example, just the other day, I oh, I had a headache, you know, in this part of my head, and I just went into uh, conscious humming. I started breathing, and I visualized my humming, the vibrations of my humming, just traveling up to that part of my head that I where I had the headache. And after a few minutes, it did begin to dissipate. So once again, frequency plus intent equals healing. You also talk about when we do this kind of self-healing, and as I keep pointing out, healing the environment or someone next to you, if you put your hand on them while you're humming, you're the conductor of the sound. You can do it with your animals, you can do it with trees, you can do it with anything, um, and benefit the relationship and the tonality, if you will, or the harmonic of the community. So when groups of people do this work, it has a, a whole additional power. Share with us some of your experiences along those lines. I'm going to share with you a real quick story that happened to Andy and I about 20 plus years ago. Uh, we were meditating together. This uh, inner guide and said, okay, you've uh, now helped bring awareness of the uses of sound for personal healing onto the planet. It's now time to incorporate another aspect of sound, and this is using sound for planetary healing. After that, whatever connection we had disappeared, and we had to figure out how to use sound for planetary healing. And what we did was we initiated, and we're coming now, uh, we initiated on Valentine's Day uh, of uh, 2001, the very first of now, uh, oh, excuse me, it's 2002, and now uh, on February 14th, Valentine's Day of 2023, we are coming on to the 21st annual World Sound Healing Day, which is a day that is focused on generating a, if you like, sonic Valentine to the Earth Mother, people just making sound, oftentimes an ah sound or an ohm or a hum, or they can be hitting a crystal bowl or doing any sort of sound as long as it is encoded. The energy of gratitude, compassion, kindness, and appreciation, i.e. love. And then we generate that, we project it to the planet. And the idea is, as you probably uh, are aware, that there is an electromagnetic field that occurs um, between our heart and our brain, and when we are in a state of coherence, this electromagnetic field is anywhere from 50 to 500 to some people even perceive of 5,000 times greater. Uh, and then when we add the element of sound, it's increased even more, which is why the different prayers on our planet 
or vocalized or whispered, chanted, spoken, or sung. Because sound amplifies the power of our meditations and our prayers and helps focus this energy. So that literally, when we have people throughout the planet, we create this collective, coherent field that goes out and has been actually shown to shift and change the vibratory consciousness. How beautiful. I mean, it's a lot different than um, the archbishops bagging a babe, which was the origin of Valentine's Day. But And so when people come together and express gratitude, compassion, kindness, love, with an intentional sound, there is a unifying, as you point, coherence that any one of us can do. So families that sing together, or people that pray together or chant together. Talk to us a bit more about breath and thought and how those two elements that we're endowed with at birth are such vital tools. Well, that's probably everything because uh, sound is the embodiment of breath. There ain't no uh, breath without... Uh, uh, no, there's no sound <laughs> without breath. And and breath is that, that life force that is so that we take for granted, obviously. We're breathing all the time. But when you think about combining, you know, doing some diaphragmatic breathing and then having sound come forth, from that breath, it is what is inherent in helping us to, you know, release that stress, helping us to connect more with spirit. And in fact, I believe that the Latin word uh, for breath is spiritus, which is uh, the breath of God, which yeah. is connecting with spirit. And so when we are really focusing on that breath, we are connecting with spirit. And then we add that yeah. sound. One of the things that we have on World Time Healing Day, and in fact, once a month we've been doing this sound sot song uh, that is uh, online. And uh, we do a 10-minute or so uh, guided global ohm. And part of that is a five-minute experience of just breathing and as you breathe you feel gratitude and this is if you like the real key it's very simple but the key to basically projecting uh, into our field with our breath and then amplifying it with sound is the aspect of using and uh, using gratitude and appreciation and we love that so we really suggest that of anybody who's working with any sound including just to even talking. Yeah, that's, it's a know, beautiful way to start your day is to really focus on gratitude, filling your body and your body breathing out gratitude to the world. We're almost out of time, and I don't want to miss talking about the numbers of gifts you give the audience for free and your website, HealingSounds.com. Explain to us what people can find to further their own work with what you're doing. Mm, well, one, one of the really... Uh, popular, I would have to say, uh, free uh, items on our website is called the seven minute chakra tune up. And it gives people the opportunity to uh, balance and align the seven chakras, each one separately with a sacred vowel sound. And once people start working with that, it begins to kind of open that door. Just today, I found another it's called the sonic health enhancer. And it's all these extraordinary. Well, it's a very special thing that I, uh, created for people to like listen to uh, in this uh, time of, uh, shall we say, uh, challenging um, uh, vibrational phenomena. And it, it, it's really cool, too. So HealingSounds.com has got all sorts of different things. It literally is unto itself, uh, and not only an award-winning website, but it is a portal to all sorts of things. There's information, there's um, lots of teaching tools, such as tuning forks and our books and of course Jonathan's uh, plethora of recordings that he has done through the years I think there's 30 yeah, or, yeah 30, 30 award plus. winning recordings yeah. so it's all good so, so there's a lot so of, we invite people yeah. to come there because it, it really is life changing we, we also uh, at that point uh, they can also find out about World Sound Healing Day and other things because 
HealingSounds.com is sort of like an overall umbrella that hooks up a number of different other sound websites. HealingSounds.com has been around for, oh, 25 or 30 years. It's probably one of the first uh, yeah. sound healing websites on the planet. And it's, uh, it's our gift to be able to introduce people to the power of sacred sound. That is sound coupled with intentionality. Oftentimes, any sound we make, we do it with love. Thank you so much. Again, www.healingsounds.com. It's been such a pleasure sharing the hour with you. Thank you for joining us, everyone in the listening audience. I'm Dr. Zohar Hieronymus. You're listening to 21st Century Radio, and our guests have been Jonathan and Andy Goldman. 21st Century Radio is produced by Hieronymus and Company. Our executive producer and research assistant is Laura Kortner. I'm Dr. Zohar Hieronymus, and remember, we do need more love in the world.